welcome back to channel this is Susie from thread quarters thanks for joining me again today today I'm going to chat to you about a dress that I made for my 40th birthday um, back in October of this year 2020 and um, as we know lockdown has been happening all around the world so it's called different things in different places we had uh, plans to go out for a lovely dinner and staying over in a hotel um, in Belfast and it was all booked and ready and I wanted to make a nice dress for the occasion so I went ahead and did that and um, the day that we were to be going out for dinner and staying over uh, we <laughs> lockdown kicked in so I didn't get to go um, I still have credit for the hotel though so I will still be able to uh, get my little birthday um, treat but it'll just be uh, next year sometime hopefully but I did make a dress for it it's all ready to go so whenever I do get around to being able to do have my birthday treat I have something to wear so I wanted to chat to you about the dress um, and all about it and I thought it deserved its own video because I put a lot of um, time and effort and love into this project and I just wanted to share it with you so the um, fabric I chose was this beautiful Lady McElroy viscose, which I have loved for ever. It's just such a beautiful, vibrant floral. I love my florals so much. I love um, deep, rich um, jewel tones, and this sort of ticks all the boxes. It's all the colors that I absolutely love, and I know suit me really well. And I love working with viscose. I just love the drape of it and the movement of it. And uh, yeah, it makes very nice clothes. Um, I, if you don't know, I have a little fabric shop called threadquarters.co.uk. Um, and I've recently been stocking uh, various different dressmaking fabrics. And I um, had picked a few of my favorite Lady McElroy um, fabrics for my shop. And one of them was this one. And I just knew that I had to keep some back for myself. Um, but I, initially I thought, oh, well, I'll make a top with it or something like that. But when the little idea of my um, birthday dress came into my head, I was like, no, I think I'm going to make something with that fabric because I love it so much. Now, it did take, I think, about five meters of this fabric. It wasn't a budget-friendly project, to say the least. Um, but worth it you know for a special dress i thought i could push the boat out a little bit so the pattern that i use for this is from this birda magazine this is birda 12 2011 so december 2011 uh, so i've had this for quite a long time um, and to be honest this is a really good um addition and there are a lot of things in this magazine that I have been wanting to make, you know, for all the years. I've thought, mm, I'd love to. The pattern that I have sort of had my eye on for years, well, since 2011, basically, is this beautiful evening dress here. I love this tie detail at the front, the long sweeping skirt. The skirt actually is a bit of a... Um, balloon shape maybe so it goes out and then in at the um, hem and the fact that it's long sleeves as well it's a great sort of um winter time um evening dress and i mean it's absolutely stunning in that green i would love that I, and she's it, this one is made out of silk crepe oh, gorgeous it cost even more than um <laughs> the, my dress but yeah, you can see also there's the line drawings. If I can do it, there you go. So you can see that sort of ballooning shape of the skirt. It's got a pleat at the front and the tie, tie detail as well. So if you haven't ever sewn with a burner pattern, let me just tell you a little bit about that. This is the way your pattern pieces come. These sheets are in the middle of your magazine and you pull them out, of the, they're stapled in. To the very center and you just pull them out and you unfold them all and you get this don't even look at that one with the red because that's the special pattern in it but yeah so 
See that? All those different colored lines, they all equate to different patterns and you have to trace it off. You have to find your size. You have to, first of all, you have to sign, find your pattern. Then you have to find your size. So the dashed or dotted line and then try and trace it out and put all the markings on. It's a lot of work. It takes nearly as long doing that as actually sewing up your garment. So if you're ever thinking about doing Berta, be prepared for that. So that was the first thing that I had to do. And let me show you the, some of the pattern pieces just to show you how crazy they are. I might have to stand back for this. Um, I use this um, gridded paper, um, which will be linked in the description box below if you are interested in it. It's sort of in between paper and tissue paper. It's not as, as um, thick as uh, normal printer paper but it's not as thin as tissue paper. It's not gonna rip apart that easily. It's thin enough that you can see the lines through it. I love the fact it has grids on it because then I always make sure that I keep my grain line um, parallel to that, to the, to the grid. Really, really handy. So um, let me open it up and I'll show you the crazy front pattern piece. So as you can see, this pattern piece is immense. I had to, cut and stick quite a few pieces together and um, just to fit it all on um, the uh, it's all one piece which is slightly unusual some a lot of these tie waisted or twist front dresses um, have like a waist seam but this is all in one and um, you can see this section over here um, is actually the shoulder but it's at it's sort of over to the side because when you twist the dress it ends up the right way up which I think is really interesting obviously this big giant section sticking out here is the tie in fact there's even more that you're supposed to add on to that um, believe it or not like it, the tie is immense I mean it's obviously a feature of this dress um, and I'll chat more about that later on and the thing I was worried about, not worried about, but when I was reading the instructions and I just couldn't get my head around is um, this section here right at the front and how it was going to all come together. And I literally, I was reading the instructions and I just couldn't work it out. And I thought, well, stuff it. I'm just going to go with it. And maybe once I have the fabric in front of me, it's going to, I'm going to work it out. So those are the crazy pattern pieces. Well, really just one pattern piece that was crazy. And the thing about it is that, uh, it, like you can't put those two tie front pieces side by side on the fabric, just impossible. So that was my next issue was l laying it out on the fabric. And of course I had to do it on flat, not folded fabric, like that tie pattern piece wouldn't fit on a on folded fabric. So everything had to be on the flat. I had to move my dining table and just sort of spread it out. Um, I had not cut enough fabric, so I had to go and cut another length of fabric and go and wash it and um, sort of, I had to do it in two stages. So I've actually um, filmed some footage of the process of making this because I thought I was gonna do a full on making vlog, but then time got away with me. I didn't get to do it, sorry guys. So just a, a chat through of it instead. Um, but you can see some of the images of me trying to work on um, lying, laying it all out flat and you can see the layout and things like that. Um, yeah, it was a labor of love. I had sore knees and sore back by the end of it um, and just, you know, cutting it out really carefully. So the next part of uh, sewing with a Berta pattern is in the center of the um, magazine, um, you get to there's a section right in the center. So the very center is your pattern pieces. And then um, beside it is this section here that's just black and white and um, not glossy. And these are your instructions. And um, Berta patterns do not have very detailed instructions. So this was my dress. It gives you this information here. 
okay? And because there's actually a top version in the magazine as well, which is actually very nice, you, you actually have to refer to the top instructions when you're making it. And let me read you an example of what the instructions are. Okay, so construction. Stitch center seams on front, beginning short upper seam exactly at marked point of neck edge. Press seam allowances open. Lay pleat in direction of arrows and base to upper edge. Fold integrated tie bands in half lengthwise, right side facing in. Pin and stitch curve edges together from marking to marking. Seam number one. Birda patterns um, mark their seams with numbers, so in the order to sew it. So that's something actually quite, quite handy. Clip seam allowances at marking at seam number one and clip allowances of curves several times. Stitch horizontal edges of front right sides together, matching center seams. Turn tie bands right side out, press allowances of horizontal seam up. It was like gobbledygook, but when I got the um, fabric in front of me, I couldn't really do it with the paper because paper you just can't manipulate the same way as fabric. But once I got the fabric and I just slowly worked my way through every single line, every single short in, um, instruction, it's actually really, really easy. And it came together smoothly, not a bother at all. Um, oh, alterations. Right, I'll chat through alterations really quickly. So this uh, pattern is drafted for tall people, um, which means that the skirt length was really long. I'm um, five foot six and a half, um, and, it, and it was way too long for me. So let me show you on my pattern piece, you can see that I, I held it up to me. That was the best way that I could do it. I just literally held this pattern piece. I mean, I knew that, okay, now I don't know. Oh yeah. I knew that that was my um, body and I just sort of held it up like this, like that, and decided that I was gonna pinch out some, but I didn't wanna pinch it all from the same section. So I did one roughly at the hip, and then one just sort of below the bus um, here. And I literally just pinned it up. There's a good like three centimeters there and another about three centimeters there. So I took a lot out of the length of the dress. And of course I did that for the back as well. I also adjusted the length of the sleeves and made them shorter too. Um, the other thing to remember, if you are ever gonna do a burda pattern, you have to add on your seam allowances as well. So the lines that they show on their um, crazy pattern sheets don't include seam allowances. Make sure you add them in. The, the instructions do actually suggest what seam allowances to add. So for example, it says for normal seams, 1.5. For the curved seam, they suggest seven millimeters and for the sleeve hems, four centimeters. So, so you know, it does give you a bit of information, but you have to remember to go and do it. Um, but apart from that, like putting it all together, once I did that tie front piece, um, well, it all just came together so easily. It tells you they have that big long um, tie section of your front dress piece, actually you then draft a big rectangle to sew onto the end of that as well and have like, it seems like meters and meters and meters of fabric. I didn't make my ties as long as that because they have the dress drafted to be tied, the tie to have a really giant, giant bow tied in it and then the tie ties to go all the way to the floor. Now, I decided I didn't want a big bow just tied in a knot, as you'll see from the, from the cutaways, and then quite a long um, tie there. So even with cutting that down, they're still so long. And the instructions, which I didn't understand initially, they have you t sew on the extra length of the ties, like nearly the last step. Whereas I thought it made more sense to just do all the ties once you've, sew once you've sewn the center front seam. Well, sure, you might as well do the ties. 
<laughs> then, um, as I started to try and wrangle my dress through my machine to sew the rest of it, I realized why you do the ties at the end, because they're a pain in the butt. They just get all tangled up, twisted round your machine, all twisted round myself, like I felt like I was like turning into Thai spaghetti. Um, so yeah, I, I realized afterwards it was too late by then. So it was a bit of a pain, but you know, if I ever were to make this again, I don't think so. But if I were ever to make it again, I would know to maybe leave the ties till the end. And I think if I were to make it again, I would um, not make them as long. Like I walk down the stairs and the ties are like trailing behind me like a, like a big long train. <laughs> and actually the cat was on the stairs and started chasing it and caught it. And I was like, oh, what happened? So there she was, <laughs> attacking the tie. <laughs> um, the neckline as you'll see from the cutaways, is pretty low. And in fact, if it had just been a, a plain fronted dress without the tying, it would have been too low and I would have had a problem. But uh, for some reason, when you do the tie, um, when, when you tie the, twist the ties at the front, when you twist the ties at the front, um, it sort of brings the V close together right between the bust and it's a lot less gapey and booby and uh, nice. It's totally fine. I like it a lot actually. But if it didn't do that, I, I would have been having an issue and I would have had to try and like counter um, figure out how to make it more appropriate. Um, but as it is, it worked out fine, thank goodness. But yeah, that's something to bear in mind as well if you are ever thinking of making this dress. I just remembered uh, something else that I changed. The pattern has a uh, back center back zip. Um, and I felt as I was making it up, I think there's enough room in this to get away with not doing a zip. So I sewed up the, the center back um and hope for the best and it was absolutely grand because it's a little bit roomy um that you then cinch in with the ties and um, it meant that when it's not tied there's that little bit of room and it's like it just fits over over my head so brilliant that cut out a huge a huge step which by the way in a burda pattern it says so invisible zip to back opening edges so you just got to know how to do it. Oh, uh, the other thing that happened, because it's all sort of coming back to me. The other thing that happened, I, was tr I traced everything out, I cut all my pattern pieces out, all good. Got started reading the instructions and um, got to the back section and it said stitch back darts. And I went, what back darts? <laughs> I hadn't traced any back darts onto my pattern pieces. Ah! So I had to get the pattern sheet back out, get my pattern tissue paper out, try and find the pieces, the, the, the pattern lines and place my pattern piece back on top of it accurately, make sure it's in exactly the right place, try and see if I could see the darts through the, oh God, it's horrendous. And I drew that on, then pin, pinned my fabric back, up, back onto my pattern piece and um, mark my darts on. Oh, so that was another faff that I had to do. <laughs> and anyway, I'm thrilled with the dress. I think it's beautiful. It's exactly what I um, had hoped to make for um, my special birthday, even though I didn't really get to wear it. I mean, I wore it a little bit around the house for the day, but like, not quite the same as getting all dressed up and glamorous and being out uh, for a lovely dinner and that sort of thing. But that'll come, that'll come. Um, and maybe I'll try and get some photos, no, I'll definitely get some photos, maybe I'll share them on here um, when that time comes so you can see a few more photos of the dress in action, so to speak. Um, but anyway, I really hope you enjoyed my little rundown of my Berta birthday dress. Um, any questions? fire them down below. I'll, I'll try my best to, to answer them as best I can. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. 
and um, drop me a comment, say hi, love having a chat with you guys. If you enjoy these sorts of videos, please do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any further videos in the future. And I hope you all have a lovely weekend and lovely week and I'll see you again very soon. Bye.